I'm live backstage with Eugene Lin, the designer. Hello. Hello. How are you feeling? Very well, thank you. Thank you for having me in Digital Fashion Week. <laughs> okay, now do talk us through The Judgment of Paris, which is your Spring Summer 13 collection, which you did show at London Fashion Week, yes. but now you're showing it here. Yes, I am. It's slightly edited, rearranged, so it's more friendly for the Asian, Asian market, but I didn't want to make it look like it's a whole new collection for Asia because I believe good clothes work all over the world. So let's take a look at this. So this is our opening look. Andre is going to be modeling it. Um, it's a new take on the trench coat. It's a deconstructed trench dress, actually. So taking elements of a trench coat, but playing around with it and making it more feminine. Um, what do you think about the concept of a muse? Is Andre someone that you would look to to be a potential muse? He's opening your show? Definitely yes, because I really go for unconventional beauty. In, um, in London, my muse was a, was a model called Yana, and she's actually half Korean, half Russian. And it's a really strange look, and I really like sort of quirkiness in it. I don't do, I don't do very pretty, overly sweet type of looks. And um, Andre, you know, as everyone knows, he's a man, but you know, it's such a pretty look, strong, yet slightly fragile. And that's something I'm really attracted to. And definitely, he, he could be my muse any day, any day. That angelic face, I can't stop staring at him. Oh, definitely, those, those eyes and just, just his cheek structure, you know, very, very pretty. All right, let's talk more about you and your collection. So let's move down. What other pieces can you talk to us about? Um, this is Andre's second look. It's a maxi dress and uh, we did the whole print ourselves. It's, um, it's based on the theme regarding the apple of discord and the myth. And so we took like, the idea of a digital apple and we played around with it proportion-wise, flipped it about, and we came up with this print. Anything on the back? Yes, in the back as well. Amazing. How do you put your prints together? Is this digital? It is a digital print. I work with a print designer and we go through like various drafts of it, I set the theme, the topic, um, and I get revisions sent to me all the time. Like, how, what do you think about this print? And I'll circle bits of it. I like this, I don't like that, let's change this. Let's look at this, maybe we could play with that. And it's a collaborative process. This is a sleeveless um, coat for Spring 13, and we're teaming it with a swimsuit inside with a matching print that goes with the scarf as well, which we are just draping on, on the shoulders, just as an accessory. Uh, tell me a little bit about your history. So you studied at Central St. Martins, which obviously has a lot of famous alumni. Um, talk to me about that. Well, um, I moved to London in 2003 and did the BA Women's Wear course, graduating in 2008. Um, then I did the postgraduate pattern cutting course. And after that, I went to work for like, a couple of designers before launching my label in early 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, what about As Ashley Isham? You worked uh, there as well. Tell me yep. about that. Um, I worked for him for one season as a freelance pattern cutter. I think it was spring, summer 2009. That was an interesting experience. And it's um, very nice to, to work for another Singaporean, of course. You really wowed the critics with your Judgment of Paris collection that, of course, you guys will be seeing very, very soon at 7 p.m. Uh, do tell us, how important is it to please the critics? Um, I would say the first thing one should please is yourself. I've had collections where you know you try to guess what the critics want, uh, what the buyers want, and in the end, you 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 end up with a product that you're never really happy with yourself. So I decided since the collection after that just to please myself first, and the reception has gotten stronger and stronger. People are more and more um, attuned to the vision that I am trying to send out, and that's really been paying off. Who is the typical Eugene Lin woman? She's usually a patrician, about 25 to 45, slim silhouette, you know, with a reasonable spending power, and likes to dress not so much as a fuss, fussy sort of red carpet way, but people who have a sense of identity to take day wear pieces and maybe dress them up for evening wear and vice versa. 
And why be based in London, not Paris, New York, another fashion capital? Well, I don't speak French. Well, not proper French anyway. And uh, I grew up in, um, did my education in London. So it's been about nine years, t going on 10 now. It only made sense resources wise. And you know, the whole London vibe of clothing and digital print is really being a theme for London designers. So I'm, I'm really enjoying my time there right now. And when you say this collection was edited for an Asian market, what does that mean? It means the orders were swapped slightly, the shoes were made more, you know, um, less wintry in a sense, because in summer we don't really get bright sunshine, we tend to get a lot of rain. <laughs> so um, so for the, for the show here, we've got like easier to wear shoes slightly less boot looking shoes. What do you think about the phenomenon of the celebrity designer that seems to be emerging at the moment? We've got Victoria Beckham. She was apparently one of the most tweeted about people at New York Fashion Week. And of course we've got singers like Kanye West as well launching their own lines. How do you feel? Um, <sighs> we won't really be seeing Valentino launching a rap album anytime soon, will we? Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Okay, I want to see a, a few more pieces from your line. Let's move down. Any other pieces that stand out that you would like yeah. to s talk about? Um, this shirt, for example, I'm not sure if this is on. Is this on? Well, this shirt, for example, um, it's silk crepe de chine, 100% silk. And I took out the shoulder seam in order to get the print sitting right on the shoulder. You see it on the girl, so you get a very smooth shoulder line that goes all the way down the sleeve so that's whole and the front and back is, is one piece that's something i really really like <laughs> and um i just wanted to ask you a question before we move on to the next piece yeah. which other designers inspired you why did you want to go into fashion design oh i really at the start of the career it was you know the obvious things like versace gianni versace the late gianni versace then it was the late lee mcqueen but you know, ever since I've been actually following fashion to my um, education, it's been designers like Shalayan, Hussein Shalayan, Azadin Alaya, Haider Ackerman, Rola Mue, um, Lam Vam, really love um, Vivian Westwood. Anyone with a particular signature sense of cut, very cut based designers, I find myself gravitating towards. Is it nice to show with veteran designer Thomas Wee as well in the same uh, Digital Fashion Week? Oh yes, definitely. I mean, he's old enough to be my dad and that's to be actually, you know, put in the same Digital Fashion Week as him. It's, it's very nice. Okay. It's a nice nod. <laughs> Tell me about your suit. Well, this suit is designed by um, Jackie J.S. Lee. She's a Korean-born um, London-based designer and this was her one-off suit from Autumn Winter 2011 collection. Um, What's it made of? It's made of wool, very very fine wool from one of the best mills in the UK and this is her sort of her signature thing, sort of yes. very subtle embossed shirt details. She's a genius at that. She does women's wear but this is her one-off menswear suit. Looks very very nice on you. Thank you. Let's move on to this one. Um, well, not this one really. Oh, move on to next one. This one is um, a showpiece. Could you take the tab out? Yeah, just push it in. This is a showpiece that um, is show only. I hi highly doubt I will be getting orders on this, but very welcome to if you really like it. And um, we did our own piping, which runs all the way around the pieces about, I think this one was about nine meters of piping that just goes around this trouser alone and the matching um, top. So worn as a whole ensemble, you get a really striking effect on this really slim, tall girl. Um, what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want people to remember you for? Great tailoring, pattern making, prints? I want people to remember me as a designer with a great cut and someone who just never gave up. Okay, let's continue going down the line. There's plenty more looks to see. Anyone's in particular? This one, perhaps the shoe? 
Um, I've got the shoes, I've got the shoes. This is a suit, an all-over print suit that Elena will be wearing for the show. And uh, I just wanted to go crazy and just print the whole thing as a, you know, a, sh a statement. Of course, when it comes to wearing it for every day, you won't wear it together unless you, you two are that loud and want to make a statement. But you would most likely, you know, team this with um, either a black pencil skirt or a black pair of cigarette trousers. And um, the same for the trousers, you do a reverse, maybe a tank top, a, a white shirt, you know, lots of options. Now, what's your favourite trend of the moment? Favourite trend for Spring 13? Mm -hmm. Hmm, with regards to my collection. Yeah. Um, it's the deconstructed collar. Just hang on there. Sure. Would you call this ox blood, the colour? Um, possibly. I refer to it on the line sheets as burgundy, but hey ho, <laughs> rose by any other name. <laughs> Um, it's this front panel that curves over and turns into the shoulder cape into the back storm flap. So that was a bit of a challenge to get the collar to sit into the facing like that, but very happy with it. Well, I am so happy for you because this collection is what I like to call D for Divine. Well done. Thank you. And uh, good luck for the show. A bit later on, 7 p.m., Eugene Lin. And straight after that, my co-host Rana will be interviewing you on a one-on-one -on -one Google Plus Hangout.